All right, so in my almost 10 years in tech, I've been able to sustain a great amount of focus on different topics for various amounts of time throughout these uh, uh, years, right? Uh, back in 2017, I spent six months nonstop studying cloud. Back in 2021, I spent two months learning Linux Bash. And currently, I am spending three months learning Python in GitHub Copilot. I'm taking different approaches, but there are some common denominators from all these moments of focus that I feel like anyone in any situation with any amount of money, because nothing of the advice that I'm going to give you is going to cost anything, can apply. Up front, I would love to acknowledge a couple of advantages and some may say privileges that I have, but right off the bat, I don't have any kids, I don't have a marriage, I don't have anything like that that would require a great amount of time, energy, and all of that. And that means I have more time to myself, more time that I can pretty much choose to do whatever I want to with it. So that's definitely an advantage I have going for me. But I will say that the advice I have, anyone in any situation can apply. So with all that being said, hi, I'm GPS. I do cloud things at Microsoft here on YouTube. Please like and subscribe. It helps me keep sponsors away from this channel. And yeah, welcome to a new video. All righty. So step one, this thing, this thing is not your friend. Well, okay. If you make it something that's useful for you, which I think I've made this device pretty useful for me, it's great. But there's a lot of apps out there that are engineered to just steal your attention away. So, and a lot of settings and things like that, that come into most modern phones, not just iPhone, but all phones that are just really are meant to take away your attention. When you want to sit down and carve out some time and you want to study something, you want to minimize distractions, right? Maybe you're in a room, you, you got nice quiet, you got a beverage, you got everything you need to study and then your phone starts ringing or a notification from Starbucks comes up and it takes your attention away and you're like, oh, let me lift up my phone. And then you find yourself three hours in TikTok or whatever like that. I have some advice here. First of all, as you can see, my phone is grayscale. There are no colors there. And I find that this helps me feel like my phone is a lot more boring than it is. Step one, that helps a lot. Step two, race to wake. So when you raise your phone and the screen comes on or tap to wake is not enabled on my phone. And I recommend that you do that for yourself as well. Sometimes when something pops up on your phone or maybe you're just moving your phone and like from one place to another and you raise it to move it, it turns on and you're like, oh, let me just check my phone real quick, something like that. No. So now I have to deliberately pick up my phone and click the lock button for the screen to come on. And I found that a little bit of friction is all you need to remove the habit of always checking it. The second one is iOS. And I know Android has this too. I just don't know what it's called. Has this thing called focus, which are profiles that where you can customize a bunch of different settings of your phone. So when I want not my phone to basically never ring, I have do not disturb. I have profiles for personal where I only get notifications from apps and people from personal life. And then I have a work profile where I only get notifications from people and apps from when I'm working and work stuff, right? Highly recommend you spend an hour configuring these for yourself. And the last thing I have for advice when it comes to not make, making sure your phone doesn't take away your attention is to just not have any social media apps. As you can see, I don't have any, well, I only, I only have one screen. You see no social media here. And also the uh, Safari is blocked. You see how on the top left Safari is blocked. I have this app called the Block Site. If you want to use it, go ahead. I don't have like a discount code or anything like that. But what it does is you put in a list of websites and apps that you don't want to be able to use and it'll block it for you. You need to actively type in a password to unblock them. I created a really long password. I use one password. I generated it. And then I just wrote it down on a piece of paper that I actually have sitting down on my other desk. And when I need to unlock these, I have to go and get that piece of paper and type it in. I just value my focus so much. And it's kind of sad that we're now in a day-to-day -day life where we have to actively work against applications and features stealing our attention. But hey, it's what I, it's what I value. It's what I um, think is worth putting the time into. So I do. So that's step one, remove distractions. Of course, there are other distractions, like maybe there's um, people who live with you or there's things, I don't know, the other things that I really don't have a lot of advice on, but I know you most likely have a phone, so I'm giving you advice on how to remove the distractions 
from there. Okay, step two, or I guess advice number two is to have a plan outlined as to what you want to learn. When I was a beginner in cloud, so again, back, back to that period in 2017, where I spent six to seven months, I was following the Linux Academy, AWS Certified Developer Associate course, RIP Linux Academy, one of the greatest learning platforms to have ever existed. And I would just go through that course. I would spend a day, usually for me, it was like spending a day on a video because I learned very, very slow. Like I read something, I read a couple lines, I have to reread it again because I'm just like, I have no idea what's going on here. Again and again and again and again and again. I used to think this was a defect, but now I'm just like, I don't really care if it's a defect. I just need to read it again so I can understand. So I do it. And I would recommend you figuring out what learning style works for you, but have a plan. Be able to sit down and attack that plan instead of trying to spend time figuring out what it is that you need to learn. Because when you have too much space to be creative with what it is that you need to learn, you're going to get lost and you're not going to decide on anything. So outline absolutely everything that you're going to need to do. I would ideally outline from start to finish. Like, okay, this is where I'm at. This is where I want to get to. Outline that path for yourself. But if you need to take more of a like week by week approach, go ahead and do that. But just don't do it day to day because that's, you're just going to waste so much time for that. And when I was learning Linux, Bosch, I used a book. Uh, contrary to using a course for the first uh, for learning cloud, and now when I'm learning as I'm learning Python and GitHub Copilot, it's more of an active project building type of learning situation where I sit down one week. I'm like, this is what I want to build this week. Next week, this is what I want to build that week. There's a lot more of me figuring it out. But given all the years that I have experience learning and just with the technologies and such, it's a lot easier for me to handle. And I find myself not running into that issue of having to outline things as much. And I can do well enough with saying like, oh, I want to build this. But if that doesn't work for you, then don't do it. I don't care if it works for me. I don't care if it works for the majority of people. If it doesn't work for you, it just doesn't work for you. Figure out what works for you. But please outline your learning. All right. The last bit of advice that I have is to make sure that you are documenting your progress in some kind of way. Before I dive deeper into that, I just want to tell you, do not try to become an influencer, unless that's something that you want to do. A lot of people, I feel like, think they now have to work on a brand. They have to like post everything. I see people who are already talking about roles in things that they don't even work in. And I, I feel like you're doing yourself a disservice and you're, you're, you're sort of minimizing this frustrating and beautiful <laughs> process of actually learning and struggling to get into whatever topic that it is that you want to get into by focusing too much on follower counts and metrics and things like that. Don't get me wrong. These platforms have done great things for my career, but I wouldn't be making these videos. I wouldn't have the presence that I do if I actually didn't do the work, right? You, I would say for your own, I, I don't want to, I don't want to call myself a role model or people that you follow role models, but people that say you learn from, make sure those people are actually doing the things that you want to do. Like would, a lot of influencers optimize their content and optimize what they put out for metrics because that's their day-to-day -day living. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be a creator. A lot of the most popular cloud computing and DevOps creators are people who do that full-time because they can do it like full-time but make sure you are following the path that will get you to the job that you want to get to. If you want to be a DevOps engineer, you want to be a cloud engineer, whatever it is, that's completely fine. But follow the path that's going to take you there. Don't follow the path that's going to take you to the influencer result, right? Because that's not what you want to do, right? You're not optimizing for better content, for better clicks or anything like that. You're optimizing for your own learning. So document your learning in a way that helps you with that. As an example, when I was learning cloud computing, I was just typing out notes. There was no public aspect to it whatsoever. There's no social media aspect to it whatsoever. I was really just typing notes. That's how I ended up with like a 70 page PDF. I'll, I'll have like a screenshot or something of it. Um, but yeah, and then that sort of helped me build some momentum as well. And I was, I got to the point where I ended up being like, whoa, I ended up with like 67 pages of notes. And it was just stuff that I was writing down every single day. The, the approach that I took for 
when I was learning Bash was to just write blog posts. I'm not known for writing. I'm pretty sure the majority of you don't even know that I have a, a, a blog made by GPS.com, by the way. But I knew that it was something that I was not going to put too much pressure on, I, like, for example, making videos or things like that. But it was a way for me to actively take notes and take it a step further to really synthesize and put it into this like written format. So I ended up with, I don't remember, like 10 maybe blog posts along the way. And I wasn't doing it every single day. It was more so, I think, at the end of the week, maybe once or twice a week, I would write up a post from the notes that I've taken day to day. And the approach I'm taking now to document my progress, making videos. You saw my last video, it was a mess. If you ask me if I'm a Python developer after doing a couple of projects, I would say no, <laughs> but that's kind of like what studying is. It's like you're, it's like a lot of messy thoughts and you end up with more of a polished learning process and more of a polished product. But the journey through learning something can be very messy. So that's why that video was messy. That's why the probably next couple of videos uh, related to my Python learning are so going to be messy. Do whatever fits best for you, but optimize for your learning, not for the metrics when it comes to documenting your progress, but please do document your progress. All right, that's it. That's all I have, three pieces of advice. Apply these and I promise you, you're gonna see some progress there. Most importantly, follow your own learning journey and contrary to what social media and YouTube makes you makes it seem like you don't need like productivity systems or anything like that. I think like a to-do list, a calendar and minimizing distractions, aligning what you want to do and then you've got everything that you need. All right, that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one.